let's say we've got somebody who's never done this before. They're ready. They're pumped. They're hearing this talk right now. I mean, I'm pumped. I've done this before, but I'm pumped to do it again. You know, where do they begin and how do they prep themselves for this? What can they expect for their first fast? Is it, is it a piece of cake? Are they going to have side effects? You know, walk us through it, David. What, what should they be looking out for? For sure. Well, the first thing I would do is a 12-hour overnight fast. So you start with just finishing dinner. Let's say you finish your last meal at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock or whatever it is. You don't eat anything with calories until 12 hours later, so 7 or 8 a.m., the next morning. And then what you do is when you wake up in the morning, now at night, before you go to bed, if you want something, you can have some herbal tea or you know drink some water or something along those lines, that's fine. Hydration is not an issue. It's really just caloric-based foods. And so when you wake up in the morning, you hydrate your body. So we're, all of us are dehydrated when we first wake up because we're breathing out water vapor. And so we're all dehydrated. So when we drink water, not only do we rehydrate our system, but we also distend our stomach. And when our stomach is not distended, when it's empty, we release a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin is our hunger hormone. So it goes up to the hypothalamus and says, hey, I'm hungry. And so when we drink water, we distend our stomach, we inhibit ghrelin production. We no longer get that message that we're hungry. So most people, what they notice is if they're drinking, let's say 16 ounces of water, okay? I always tell people drink 16 to 24 ounces of water before you even think about food, okay? Mm. for most people, it's a good amount of water, okay? And, and they're not used to doing that. And so it oftentimes will take them an hour, two hours to do that. And while they're doing that, they're suppressing their hunger, okay? So they're already feeling like, well, I'm not even hungry. So that actually makes it really easy to be able to do that 12-hour fast. And you can add some salt, right? Salt provides electrolytes, which can be helpful, like a little bit of sea salt, put it on your tongue or in the water can be helpful as well. If you want to do herbal tea as part of that, you know, part of the water you're drinking, great, it's fantastic. I think it's a really good strategy. It actually stimulates your vagus nerve, um, which allows you to actually move your bowels better in the, early in the day, which is one of the key strategies to having a better fasting experience. Mm -hmm. If you're constipated, you're going to be circulating endotoxins, which can drive up cortisol and stimulate a stress response, drives up cortisol, which can cause more hunger and cravings. And so um, you definitely want to be able to move your bowels and warm lemon tea or warm herbal tea the warmness of it actually stimulates your vagus nerve, stimulates peristalsis and helps you move your bowels. So I think that's a great strategy, but really just getting the hydration in is super key early in the day. Um, and that's one of the big things you want to do. And then when you're doing that, when you're hydrating well, you actually teach your body to uh, hydrate properly. Most people are chronically dehydrated, but the message they get is more of like, I'm hungry, I want, I want some sort of food. And the reason for that is because our hunger center and our thirst center in our part of our brain called our hypothalamus are right next to each other. And because food is so prevalent and easy to get, and when we eat food, we get a dopamine release. That means we get this, we get flooded, our, our brain gets flooded with this neurotransmitter that just makes us feel really good. All right. And so we've we end up creating an addiction, a dopamine addiction to the, the idea of eating food, which I think is actually a good thing. Like we, it's, it's great that God wired us to have this dopamine release when we eat. It should be a great feel-good experience, a celebration in a sense. However, we don't want to be addicted to it, right? We don't want to constantly need that hit. And so um, when we are constantly eating, again, that hunger center and thirst center are right next to each other, we actually get some neuroplastic changes in our brain where... When we're really thirsty, our body says, hey, I want the dopamine release that I get from eating. Mm. And so it's, it's telling you a signal for food when you're really thirsty, okay? Mm. And so this is why it's super important to hydrate well. And then your natural thirst mechanisms, when you start practicing intermittent fasting, when you hydrate well, your natural thirst mechanisms will kick in. And you'll actually realize when you are really hungry and when you are actually really just thirsty. <laughs> and so you'll, so your body will become resensitized and hydrating will become easier and you'll notice less hunger, less cravings. Now, I would recommend in the beginning, you know, again, 12 hours, okay, over overnight fast, something like that. You may be up to 14 hours. And then in your meals, do only three meals a day, no snacking, but in your meals, make sure you prioritize healthy protein and healthy fats, okay? So good protein, I recommend getting at least 30 grams of protein in, in each meal, okay? So if you're doing three meals, 30 grams of protein is 90 grams, right? You may even need more if you're 
very active, you're exercising, you're, you're lifting weights, things like that. Okay. Start with the protein and also add in some healthy fats, depending on how well your body digests fats. You're probably going to want somewhere between 20 to maybe 40 grams of healthy fats coming from things like extra virgin olive oil, avocados, grass-fed butter, grass-fed animal products, um, coconut oil. Those would be pasture-raised eggs. Those would be the best fats to get. They're going to be coming from those sources. And so 20 to 40 grams of fat, if you don't have a gallbladder, maybe 15 to 20 grams of fat in a meal, uh, depending on how, how well you digest it. But make sure you get that protein level. Again, 30 to 40 grams, maybe even more, again, if you're very active. That will give you natural satiation and reduce hunger and cravings. When you get your protein right, you get some fats in there, you reduce the processed foods, the simple starch, simple sugars, um, highly refined starches, when you get rid of that and you prioritize the protein and fats like I'm talking about, that will reduce cravings and allow you to go longer between meals. And in the beginning, you start with three meals. And what you may notice is, you know, depending on your activity level, you may feel better doing just two meals a day. In fact, a lot of people do that. They just do two meals a day and they're able to compress their eating window. Uh, it's a lot easier for them to compress their eating window because they're only eating once, you know, it, let's say around midday and then once in the evening for dinner or maybe once in the morning and once... Uh, in the evening or, or, you know, however you want to kind of structure it. But when you eat two meals as opposed to four meals, you actually reduce the overall amount of insulin you produce by 25 to 50%. And so insulin, again, is this hormone that it can drive up inflammation when it's elevated. It also doesn't allow us to burn fat when it's elevated and it doesn't allow us to do the house repair, right? We talked about that with the autophagy. Mm. So the less insulin we have to produce, the more insulin sensitive we're gonna be, the better we're gonna get nutrients into cells, the better we're gonna burn fat for fuel and the better house cleaning we're gonna do, the better autophagy. So if you are able to, to bring it down to two meals, that's great. Um, and then you can compress that eating window to let's say eight hours like we talked about. So first step again, to, to, to summarize that, 12 hours overnight, maybe up to 14 hours doing the hydration, really prioritizing that, getting your macronutrients right, making sure you prioritize protein and healthy fats, reducing the amount of uh, processed foods overall. Um, you know, you wanna eat carbohydrates, best sources are gonna be fruits and root vegetables, taking out grains and sugars, things like that. Get your carbs from fruit. That's my favorite source or possibly root vegetables if you do okay with those. Um, and then make sure that you're prioritizing the protein and the healthy fats and then just see how you feel. And then you may be able to compress your eating window more and uh, you know, you can, you're know you able to play around with it even further. 